Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician. And today, I'd like to give you an intuitive explanation of the central limit theorem based on rolling two dice. This is a thought experiment that I'd like you to carry along with me. So, we're going to do this experiment by rolling two dice. We're going to tabulate the averages from all possible face values from the two dice. And then we're going to plot the probability mass function of the average. Notice that the average is a random variable, because if you roll two dice, the, the average could take on one of many values. Now, before we get to that, I want to review the probability mass function of the face value of one die. This is going to be important later on. So the support set has six values, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the probability of the face value being any one of these values is one over six. Notice that this is a uniform multinomial distribution. It can take on, it, it, um, this multinomial distribution has six categories, and the probability across all six categories is uniformly one over six. Okay, so let's get into the experiment. I have the face values of the two dice, and I can calculate the average of any pair of the face values. So if the face values are 1 and 1, then the average is 1. If the face, face values are 1 and 2, then the average is 1.5. If the face values are 1 and 3, then the average is 2. And so on, 2.5, 3, 3.5. And it's the same along, the, along this row. Now, I've written the averages in this 6 by 6 table ahead of time for convenience. I encourage you to calculate these averages on your own so that you know where these averages came from. Now, in this 6 by 6 table, there are 36 averages. So knowing this number helps us to figure out what the PMF should be. There are 11 values in the support set of this random variable, the sample mean, or the average. And let's take a look at the number 1. It shows up once in this table, and there are 36 averages, so the probability of the average taking on the number 1 is 1 over 36. And it's the same thing for the number 6. It only shows up once in that table, so it's also 1 over 36. What about 1.5? It shows up twice in this table, so its probability is 2 over 36. What about the number 2? Oh, by the way, it's also the same for 5.5 because it shows up twice in this table. So here is 5.5. What about the number 2? It shows up three times in this table, so its probability is 3 over, three over 36. And it's the same thing for 5. I think you get the trend now, so I'm just going to fill out the rest of this PMF. 2.5 and 4.5. 4 over 36, 3 and 4, 5 over 36, 3.5, 6 over 36. Now, remember, the average in this case is a discrete random variable with 11 possible values. This is a probability mass function. However, what continuous random variables distribution does that plot look like? It looks like the normal distribution, doesn't it? And that is not a coincidence. Here's the key lesson that I want you to take away from this video. The reason why that sample mean has a normal looking like distribution in that plot is because there are more ways for the average to take on a middle value than an extreme value. Specifically, the middle value is 3.5, and there are six ways for the face values to combine and give an average of 3.5. And yet there's only one way for the, for the two face values to combine to give an average of 1. So that is why the proportion of the middle values is high and the proportion of the extreme values is low. 
Now, here's a question for you. What if I rolled more than two dice in this experiment? What if I rolled three, or four, or five, or 10, or 50, or 100? What would happen to the shape of that curve? Well, if I roll more dice, then we're gonna have a lower proportion for the extreme values and a higher proportion for the middle values. So that bell curve, or that normal like curve, is gonna be skinnier and taller. And that is a manifestation of the central limit theorem, the most important concept in all of statistics. Remember, the central limit theorem says that if you have n random variables, and they're independent and identically distributed, and if n is big enough, then the distribution of the average, or the sample mean, of those n random variables will be approximately normal. And that approximation gets better as n gets bigger, as you have more random variables in that sample. And here's the astonishing thing about the central limit theorem. That theorem is true no matter what the parent distribution of the original random variables is. So in this case, the original distribution, the parent distribution of the original random variable is a uniform multinomial distribution. It looks nothing like a normal. And yet, when I just took two dice and looked at the average of their face values, it looks a lot like a normal distribution. Furthermore, if you're calculating the average for more and more dice, then there are more and more values in the support set. Right now, there are 11. But if you calculate more and more averages, if you calculate the averages for more and more dice, excuse me, if you calculate the averages for more and more dice, then there are more and more values that will be squeezed in between one and six. So that starts to mimic a continuous random variable, even though it's technically a discrete random variable. So that's another aspect of the central limit theorem that this example illustrates. So in a later video, I'm going to cover the technical aspects of the central limit theorem, especially how it applies to this example. But I hope that you can take away the intuitive understanding of the central limit theorem from this video. It's very important in my experience to have both an intuitive understanding and an abstract theoretical technical understanding of a concept. And if you can bridge the gap between the two, then you will have understood the concept deeply. And that is a very good thing. Okay, so as always, I encourage you to visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician, to get your lessons and in-depth tutorials on statistics, chemistry, machine learning, and math. You can, you can also follow me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.